Well, here I am, Chaplain Dell, and we're here this evening to talk about sobriety and spirituality. Our topic for tonight is something that we're all familiar with. That's fear. Yep, fear. One of the greatest detriments to sobriety is our fears. In conversations with many individuals, the fear of the past, the present, and the future are always with us. Why is that so? We have done things in our past that we're not very proud of, and those memories keep on coming back. There is fear that someone will find out about these things and hold it against you. There is fear in the present. Can I handle sobriety? Where am I going? Can I last? This sobriety thing, is it worth the struggle? What happens if I fail and go back to some of my old things? We think about that, don't we? The future is only a guess away, and we fear to be sober, trying every day to keep away from drugs and alcohol. We fear success. Why do we fear success? That's a good question. Because most of the things we fear don't happen. They just don't. They don't happen. Childhood is another time of fear, going to a new school, bad dreams, meeting with new people, and just growing up. And growing up sometimes can be tough, even as we get older. How do we resolve the fear issues within us? I'm about to tell you a story. In our society, there are many ways uh, that our elders or through church doctrine, when a person arrives at manhood, you go through a church service or a ritual. In the Christian church, it's confirmation. In the Jewish religion, it's a bar mitzvah for the man or a bat mitzvah for the girl. There are many cultures that have their own right of passage from childhood to manhood. There is a tradition of an American Indian tribe that when a boy reaches a certain age, he is entrusted with the change from being a boy and becoming a man in the eyes of his father, his family, and his entire tribe. At the age of eight years old, the boy is presented to the Council of Elders and asked if he's prepared for manhood and his acceptance into the tribe. The ritual starts early in the day with dancing and purification rituals of the young boy. The dancing continues all day in which the boy has to participate. As evening falls and the sun starts to set, the young boy is blindfolded and led far into the desert by his father. He is brought to a desolate place and he is seated on a sacred rock outcrop. There he was told he must remain blindfolded on that rock all evening by himself and told not to move until morning. As the sun sets, his father leaves him by himself and leaves the boy all alone. You know, in a desert at night, it starts to quickly become cold as the heat dissipates from the warm sands. The boy has neither additional clothing or a blanket to keep him warm. He starts to shiver. As night wears on, he hears the sounds of the coyotes and is fearful that they might attack him as he sits defenseless in his dark and eerie place. Cougars roam the territory and would make small work of him as another tasty meal. There are scorpions and tarantulas that come out at night in search for food, and the ever-present sidewinder rattlesnake that would seek the warmth of his body and nestle next to him. 
His fears grow stronger as every sound he hears in the desert intensifies and he can hear the smallest of sounds. What was that scurrying past the cactus to his right? Did he feel a snake brush against his leg? Is there a large animal close by? He is fearful. All night, sleep does not come. His muscles tighten. His mouth is dry and there's no water to drink. Pain starts across his back and his breathing is shallow. Every sound increases his fears and anxiety. The night wears on so slowly and he cannot wait for the morning light and the rising of the sun, which will allow the boy to remove his blindfold to see the world around him. He prays for the sunshine. And as the sun creeps into the canyon, he finally, he finally can take off his blindfold and arise and turns to make tracks back home to his village as a man and a member of the tribe. As he turns around to go back home, he immediately sees the shadow of his father who has been seated on another stone nearby all night, keeping watch over his son to make sure that he was not harmed. His son hugs the father and both of them have tears in their eyes. The boy is now a man. He has conquered fear. The father had watched over his son in the darkest of the night. There's no difference between the Indian boy and his father that night or with you and your God, your Lord, your higher power as you know him, your fears and wants to keep you safe through the darkest parts of your life. God sits beside you through the night and in the morning he bless you and you know that he loves you. Fear not that you are alone in the darkness, for he is always with you. You are his child and like the Indian father who has been there, keeping watch for his son, so too the Lord is watching over you and keeping you safe. That is a comforting feeling that you're not alone in the world, that you have a longtime friend who cares for you. Fear not. That is what we call peace and joy. How blessed you really are to have a friend in the Lord. That's my story for this evening. I wish you grace and peace. I like to close my, um, my little talks with a four word prayer. I do it in every meeting and rehabs. The first two words, thank you. You know what you're thankful for? He knows what you're thankful for. You don't have to say anything else. The second two words, I'm sorry. You know what you're sorry for? He knows what you're sorry for. So when you put your head on that pillow at night, just say those four words. He'll bless you and give you peace and grace. You didn't earn it, you get it free. So next time, have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the morning. God bless you.